states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. fraud. In the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. The following goes beyond the show and beyond the gram to bring you all the fraud that's fit to be uncovered. This is the Fraudcast, and now, here's your Fraudcaster and the woman behind Frauded by TLC on Instagram, Katrina. Hi, and welcome to episode five of the Fraudcast. I am Katrina, I am Frauded by TLC, and I cannot believe that we've done four episodes already. This has been an absolutely amazing journey, an amazing experience, and your support has been amazing, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's by way of the five-star reviews you guys are leaving on iTunes. It has been absolutely amazing. Uh, You've talked to me on Frauded Night Live, which I'm really glad that I'm keeping up, and I'm glad that you guys are there to support it as well, and we'll keep those going in the future as well. If you are new to us, you can find us on Facebook at our Facebook group is The Fraudcasters. You can find me on social media at Frauded by TLC. You can find the show at The Fraudcast. We are also on Twitter as well at Frauded by TLC, The Fraudcast. We're from corner to corner of all social media. Last week, we had an incredible guest host and interview in the form of Ben's ex-wife, Hanakawa, and we were very lucky that she was able to join me for the entire show and not just provide the interview, although that interview she gave was absolutely amazing, and we're hearing great, great feedback about that all over social media and all over regular media as well. It's been picked up by several outlets, and I'm so excited that she was able to share that time with us, and hopefully we'll have her back on a future episode. So a few weeks back, we had a special guest host that you guys had a lot of feedback for and feedback about, whether it was on Instagram, whether it was on iTunes or the Facebook group. So back by popular demand, I bring you Hetero Life Mate. Listen, I, uh, my rider that I left you, I told you I needed a bowl of green M&Ms, um, three cans of Dr. Pepper chilled to specifically 32 and a half degrees. I don't see any of that stuff here. Well, I know you guys are excited to have him here. I'm excited to have him here. He makes me a better person in real life and on the show. So I'm glad he's here to join me. Now how can I be mad at you after you say something like that? (laughs) So what do do we have for you this week? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that does the show. I'm just here. You watched the show this week though, right? I did. I did. I was fortunate enough to be uh, trying to go to sleep the other night and you were laying in bed next to me and you had it pulled up on uh, your Kindle and I thought you were watching porn. Yeah, what we were actually watching was Emily give birth to beautiful little David. And why does that need to be on television? Can't you just like, like you know, fast forward two hours? Hey, look, beautiful baby boy or girl or whatever. She had a 10 hour labor. Yeah. And they, yeah. they edited it down to like 10 minutes. It sounded that. like porn. Well, the she, moaning, and I know, I understand childbirth isn't always the prettiest thing to look at. It is a beautiful thing, the, the birth of a human being. Um, but the sound, like, I, I seriously thought, like, what's she doing over there on Pornhub next to me? Why does it, I'm right here. Like, you don't need Pornhub, I'm right here. She was giving birth in what can only be described as a Russian insane asylum, aka that was a the hospital. Other thing. That was the other thing, too, like. When you travel internationally, at least, you know, the few times that I have, that's like the big fear is something's going to happen and I'm going to have to be in an international hospital and they don't necessarily have the same regulations that they do here in the United States. No offense to any international people who may be listening, but um, a Russian hospital, it did not look the same as what I remember when my daughter was born. Well, yes, but it was very important for her that Sasha be there to help with the birth. And and good on him. Glad he was there. He didn't he was doing rem- his job. Didn't remember where he was for the first two children, but you know, people learn from their mistakes. Well, he was there. That's the important thing. She had a ten-hour labor. She delivered a beautiful baby boy, David, in the insane asylum of Russia, and now he's here. And he's probably what I would say is one of the cutest babies in yeah, the ninety-day world. Was a very cute baby, but. 
so Sasha was there for that one, but he wasn't there for the birth of either of his first two children. And we have noticed on the show that they have blurred out all references to wife number two. We've seen and heard from wife number one, but we hadn't seen or heard from wife number two. Well, that all change this week because I had a lovely conversation with her. And, and this was fantastic because wife number two doesn't speak English. Correct. I had to have the entire conversation with her with the aid of Google Translate. Right. You were just furiously typing away and copying and pasting. I was just right there when you're having this conversation. You, you actually copied and pasted some of the Russian text to me. I was worried that maybe you got hacked. But uh, no, that was good work by you on that. Good job by you. Thank you. Thank you. So I had a lovely conversation with wife number two. And she had a few things to say. She said that she had didn't want to be on the show because she has a real life and a son. And she just, she didn't want the show to disrupt her real life, but she was willing to speak with me and share pictures with me that you will only see on Frauded by TLC on Instagram. So you can go check those out. That's pretty cool. She believes that Sasha is very into himself and he only cares about himself. She also believes that Emily is a little bit naive. Sasha tells us that wife number two didn't like him when he got too muscular. And told him to go find somebody else that would like him that muscular. And she... Why doesn't she want a muscular guy? That's not what she says actually happened. She says what actually happened was that he began to do all these other kinds of sports and started to change as a person. And he became a different person. Also, somewhere along Mm. this point is when Emily came into the picture. And now she can't prove that... There was infidelity, but she does have her suspicions. She did know about Emily. So this sounds familiar. If you've seen Rocky IV, when Ivan Drago gets really into the boxing thing and they start injecting with steroids and everything, kind of becomes a different person and he loses himself. That has been some of the speculation. We don't have any proof or evidence one way or the other. (laughs) Don't you love that I could tie Rocky IV into this? And, And get me in legal trouble for making accusations that he's on steroids? No, I don't, I'm not Without saying Sasha's on steroids. <laughs> not saying that. But can we just give credit where credit's due that Rocky Four ended the Cold War? No. Okay. So what wife number two had to say was that Sasha's and Emily's accounts of what happened with wife number one are accurate in that wife number one has her story, her version of events that... Sasha cheated on her, got pregnant by wife number two, and then asked wife number one for a divorce. The documents say otherwise, and Sasha and Emily and now wife number two also all say otherwise. There was a couple of years between the divorce and the birth of the child. Okay. Do we subscribe to the theory that once a cheater, always a cheater? How you find him is how you lose him. So then you would say, yes, you subscribe to that theory. I'm just saying, looks like a duck, walks like a duck. Probably a duck. Probably a duck. Quack, quack, motherfucker. (laughs) She also said (laughs) that prior to Sasha going to the United States, Sasha rarely saw their son. And that Sasha has always wanted to go to the United States. Going to America was always his dream, at least as far back as he was with her. But she does have a nice parting message that you will only hear here here in that she knows that they have a son Sasha and Emily have a son and she wishes the best for them and she wants them to be happy and for their son David to know the love of a father oh well then that's good so maybe a happy ending for them Still yet to be seen for Sasha and Emily. Yet to be seen. We're only on episode three. All right. Yeah, a long ways to go. A long ways to go. All right. What else do you have? So we saw some of Juliana finally coming to the United States. We got a little bit more of her backstory uh, this week in that she allegedly was working in a sweatshop. Yeah. How about that? And then was kidnapped and forced to model. Yeah. that Stuff like that happens. It's really sad. No. What? Human trafficking. Human trafficking being forced into modeling? Yeah. Okay. Well, what kind of modeling? I mean, she doesn't go into details on that, but for all we know, you know, it could be a certain type of modeling that she's being forced into. Yeah, we don't know. This is what her story is. She verifies it. She says it's true, uh, but I don't have any independent proof of it. Come on, you saw the movie Taken. 
That happens. And so I don't have any uh, further evidence. I don't have any proof that this, any validation. Well, you have a very particular set of skills, as they say in Taken. So do some more digging and find out. The people want the tea. Bring them I'm the tea. I'm trying to give it to them, but you keep interrupting with movie quotes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Am I fired? Can I go back downstairs now? Oh, like okay. I don't like any of this. All right. It's all staying. This is great. No. Why? <laughs> Robert and Annie. So we saw a lot from them this week, but what it's what we're hopefully going to see next week that was really exciting to me. And that next week we see scenes of Annie meeting with Bryson's grandparents, who Robert, which Robert's mom is who we think this is, introduces herself as a porn star. So this was very exciting. So we dug deep on this. And we had to go to sources like Boobapedia. Who knew? There, I, okay. Real talk. I didn't even know that was a thing. It, it's a thing. Okay. I didn't know either. Okay. But so again, not out of the realm of possibility going back to the story before to think you could have been on Pornhub <laughs> laying in bed right next to me because you just now admitted you go to Boobapedia. So go ahead. Tell us about Boobapedia. What do you got? So her porn name is Diamond Fox oh. with three X's. So that's the um, what is it? The street you grew up on the name first name of your pet the name of your first pet. So she grew up on Diamond Street and her first pet was named Fox. Fox with three X's. So really, yeah. you have to add the extra X's if you're going to be in the porn industry. That's a rule. So, so this is what we've been able to learn and dig up about Diamond Fox is that she grew up in a military family. So she moved all over. She was a straight A student and she was a good kid. She didn't get into porn until she was around 31 years old. And she did it. Wow. To make money for West Palm Beach real estate. That's late to get into that game. And then she's been in it for 15 years since. So do the math, carry the one. So she's 46 years old. At least at the time of the one of the interviews that I and was Di able to find. Diamond Fox is still doing her thing. She's she's still doing her thing. How she, about that? And, Good for Diamond Fox. Right? You know, if she can do it, she can do it, man. So she so she's been in the industry for about 15 years and has done Pretty much anything that can be done. In and the everybody. Well, yeah, that's a given in the industry. <laughs> she was in the Navy for a short period of time, but she was kicked out for sexual misconduct. Go figure. And then in 2005, she was arrested for prostitution where she was caught up in a sting where she charged $950 for sex. Oh, there it is. She was later released with only a small fine. So that's what we know about uh, porn grandma. $950 seems like a lot. Back in 2005? Oh, and then you factor in inflation. My goodness. There what would go. that be today? Like $1,500? you are asking me what rates are I don't for know. prostitution? Check, check Boobapedia. <laughs> I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to check into Boobapedia. Yeah. So that's a porn grandma. Porn granny? Uh, pornogram? Pornogram. There you have it. That may sound like a dirty version of Instagram. Maybe that maybe that's out there with, with Boobapedia. <laughs> Boobapedia, you can find us on Boobapedia, Pornogram, <laughs> all the great adult social media sites. So we know that porn grandma is very proud of being a porn grandma because she announces it on the show. So I'm very anxious to see what the TLC editors have to do with her on the next coming episodes. All right. So uh, what else do we have going on this week around social media? We have Stacy and Florian, both of them. So Stacy is Darcy's twin sister. You guys, we know who she is, right? And she's dating Florian. She's allegedly engaged to him. They've broken up and gotten back together. We don't know. She was posting a bunch of pictures of them together. He was posting a bunch of pictures of them together. But today leaked some pictures of him with a Belgian model named Shanti. Shanti. Shanti Zora. Correct. She's gorgeous. And she, those pictures. As are, most Belgian models are. She, her, <laughs> those pictures that were leaked are on my Instagram at Frauded by TLC. If you're able to see those. I have a question about Stacy. What about Stacy? Can I ask you about Stacy? Sure. Do you think like 
Darcy got her the gig as a stipulation for her to continue working? Because I know you've mentioned before, you said loud last week's show, how Darcy's kind of the TLC darling. Um, you know, she says jump, TLC says how high. That's the kind of the dynamic that's going on right now. Do you think maybe Darcy was like, hey, look, I have this sister and I want her on TV too. Well, there's been some speculation, although there's not been anything proven thus far, that that there would be a Stacy and Florian on either the other way or a 90 day fiance if he if she was going to bring Florian over. And no, nothing has panned out on that front. I haven't heard any leaks. I haven't gotten any information on that. But it would explain the two of them posting a lot of pictures together, but him not so on the down low seeing this other Belgian model. Okay. So it's feasible. My theory is feasible. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So what else do we have? So we had Paul and Karini crying divorce again for the 3,152nd time since they've been on the air. Oh, I no. didn't pay any attention to it because this is something that they do. And Karini even confirmed it to Us Weekly. So, you know, it was like legit, right? Because they only print true things in Us Weekly. <laughs> so, you know, everyone was like, oh, Paul and Karini are getting divorced for real this time. But then Paul filmed the three of them going on a boat ride this morning. What? Then Paul posted some video of him and Karini and a third person, which may be Karini's brother, all going on a boat ride together. So patch things up again, maybe? Possibly. I hope so. I'm pulling for those, too. I hope so, too. I mean, they, they, they like to pull this. We're getting divorced to up their ratings to try to get another season out of TLC. Maybe that's what they were doing again. Well, I've been around you when you've been on the phone with Paul. Yes. And he spent a lot of time talking and he seems very well in tune to the whole TLC filming process. So I guess I'm saying I wouldn't put it past him to stage something like this that he knows will get them more interested in uh, following their journey. Absolutely. And they've done it before and it's worked before because we've seen him as recently as this most recent season. And it's not like I'm eavesdropping on your phone conversation. He just he has a loud voice <laughs> and you usually have the volume turned up really loud sitting right next to me on the couch. And, you know, it's Paul. So, of course, I'm going to listen. <laughs> so uh, there we have it for them. Um, so is it really a divorce this time? My guess is no, but only time will tell. I'm rooting for him, though. Yeah, well. Get him that TV money. Go for it. Why, why not? not? When I personally... Karini's family could use the cash. I personally, I love watching Paul and Karini, yeah. but not everybody feels the same way. I just so. hope that they're sending money back there, though, to Karini's family. We'll see. I don't know. All right. I don't know. What else do we have? We had Jesse. God, Jesse just won't go away. Jesse was filming something. We don't know what. He's teasing something. I don't know any information beyond what he's put out there. I don't know anything secret, anything behind the scenes, but he was filming stuff. He was in Barcelona and he had $50,000 worth of watches and other things stolen from his Louis Vuitton bag out of a Starbucks in Spain. And then the next day he said it was $60,000 worth, which, okay, you maybe do another inventory and figure out what else may have been in there, file an insurance claim. I don't know. I don't know if it's true. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. But the other interesting thing about his trip to Barcelona wait, is Wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, just a quick question. If you're ever going to walk around with fifty or $60,000 worth of watches in the Louis Vuitton bag, um, would you just casually put that bag down on the ground while you're ordering your super mocha latte thing from Starbucks? Well, allegedly, one of the watches was like 42000 Oh, so it could have been just one watch. All right. Yeah. He said it was an investment that he worked very hard for. Okay. Well, maybe he gets his stuff back. We'll see. The other development he had while he was in Barcelona was that he had some photo ops with our dear friend Maria, who thus far we've only seen on Caesar's phone. So she is a real person. 
he Jesse was hanging out with her. Those pictures and videos that we saw of Jesse hanging out with Maria are in fact real. Maria has confirmed this, but she won't confirm any other details about why they were hanging out. My guess is if there's actually something being filmed, the two of them, I think, would make, I mean, honestly, they'd make a really good couple, to be, <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. Well, and then that would make sense, too, if she's denying, or not denying, she's refusing to comment, essentially, that's her obeying a non-disclosure agreement, more or less, right? True. So. True. I mean, this is the same Like, if you're though. not filming, then what reason would you have to say no comment? Other right. than just stay out my business. Right. And she has said before that she'll talk to me once her season was over and she has failed to do so. So maybe mm. something came up. She's accidentally spilling tea by not spilling tea. How about that? Oh, there we go. You, you guys. like that? What do you think? Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Speaking of t-shirts, we have them available in our merch store at talkersoffraud.com. Yeah, please buy stuff because we have boxes of it in this room that we're sitting in right now. And it's annoying that, I mean, I feel like uh, we should do another podcast on that show, Hoarders, because I feel like a hoarder right now with all these boxes of merch. So, yes, please go buy the merch. Yeah, buy the merch, talkersoffraud.com. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> uh, recently, Aladdin of Laura and Aladdin of 90 Day the Other Way last season has announced that he's going into a, a new business and his new business is is a tours of tunisia where he will take you on allegedly a personal tour of tunisia for like 12 or 13 days something like that which seems pretty interesting um but it has me wondering have you guys ever seen the there's a documentary, it was on Netflix for a while, and I think it's on Amazon Prime now, called Love Me, where it's about these guys that go on these uh, Russian sex tourism trips where they they talk online to these Russian women, and then these tourism companies take them to Russia, like Ukraine, to meet the women and allegedly maybe get engaged or whatnot, and bring them back to the United States. So like Russian, the new age Russian male order bride. Correct. Okay. So it had me, so Aladdin's new new little venture had me thinking about something that I'd come across by way of uh, a follower last season called a Tunisian Love Rat. Have you ever heard of a Tunisian Love Rat? Um, I know what rats are in the context of other industries, so I can just make a pretty educated guess as to what that is. Well, Tunisian Love Rats are, it's, it's something that they engage in called business. Business, business, like mind your own business, mind your own business. Okay, it's actually a name. It's a that that less legitimately what they call it, and it's a tourist scam designed to seduce and sweet talk female single tourists by often younger local men, acting usually with their whole family and friends for the single purpose of financially draining these women. Okay, it's true. It's a thing. It's a thing that happens. It's a thing. It's a legit thing that happens. It's a thing that people fall for. Yes. Okay. So as opposed to most tourist scams, which are designed to like quickly rip you off, like pickpocket you or whatever, business is a long-term goal where they can carry on for months or even years and it can financially and emotionally ruin the victim, leaving her behind with nothing but debts and a broken heart. So the thing about the business is while previously it had only been like in-person tourists, now it can be expanded to the online dating world oh. as well. So we see our American heroes on with these Muslim men, some from Tunisia, some from other Muslim countries. Uh, it's not it's not it's not reserved to just Tunisian, although that is where it originated, allegedly. So what happens is these men will then invest a lot of time in building trust and building an entire fake relationship with this victim. Well, the truth is some of them are running this actually with like up to as many as 20 women at the same time. So, wow. So while he's talking to you online, oh, love, 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 he might actually be doing that too. Stop being pasting that uh, 20 times. Right. <laughs> right. Wow. So they 
either whether they see the person in person. Now, you guys, I went down a whole Tunisian love rat rabbit hole, rat hole. <laughs> so then I shouldn't let your search history bother me then. Correct. Okay. <laughs> You're going to see Boobapedia. Yeah, and Tunisian, Tunisian love, love rats, rats and Besna, sure. <laughs> right. This yeah. is my life. This is my life. Welcome to it. So what will happen then is these guys are able to figure out like where the woman is from and based on what they're wearing and based on what they've presented themselves as, they will then adjust them, themselves to fit a certain mold that will be for attractive. whatever the woman's looking for. Right. Okay. So the amount of vulnerability that it, there is at play here. So their prime targets then are women who are open to other cultures out of like, Women who are on international dating sites. I, I know a television show that's we got a lot of those. <laughs> they have uh, relationship troubles. I, I know another television show. Actually, same one. Maybe a stressful job. Mm -hmm. But the big thing, too, is financially independent, which, as we know, a lot of these people actually aren't, but they present themselves to be initially. Right. But it turns out they're getting evicted and getting their electricity turned off and whatnot. But, you know, to each his own. So these business scammers, they know exactly how to play a woman and what to say to make them believe that they're in love with them. He uses romantic scenery, like they take them on holiday, will go to exotic countries, seduce them and draw them back. Like every time they start to like drift away, they'll draw them back using um, seduction, sweet talk. They'll do this over Skype, over WhatsApp, texting, all of the, the, the main ways that these relationships communicate when they're overseas. And their goal is to continue the fake relationship so they can either extort money from their victim or marry her for either a passport of a European country or, I don't know, a green card maybe, perhaps. And here's what's also interesting is that they often will try to use children as a means of like an anchor baby to get them to be able to stay and come to the United States, which may explain why... Laura and Rebecca and whatnot, these whole families were all, you need to have a baby. You need to have a baby. And their grandma grandparents, like, they're not going to have a baby at their age. But why is this such a focus for the family? So they're often used for, the children are often used for those kinds of purposes. So the problem is, is if, if, if a woman gets sucked into this, kind of thing mm -hmm. they often don't have any rights because of the legal systems that are in those countries like they don't have any rights if it happens while they're in that country of choice like, too bad so sad right like they're not gonna they're not gonna care about you so what this has led to is there are websites where these people these women will talk about the various methods and things that were used on them by their particular rat and they'll talk about these specific things. They'll talk names. They'll talk pictures. All of these different things. And there's multiple websites, you guys. There's so many, many websites. There's like TunisianLoveRat.com, something like that. I'll link them all in the show notes for you. So if you want to go down this rabbit hole, you're welcome to do so as well. It's really, really fascinating. The end of it, however, though, the warning that comes sort of out of it, if you're in a foreign country that it, just know that it's very uncommon in Arab cultures for a man to approach a woman that he doesn't know. Any kind of pushy or obtrusive behavior is therefore a clear indicator that they're after something else. And that any sincere and honest man will never behave like this towards an unknown woman. That's just not how they're brought up. That's, That's not just how not. High they operate over there. So if you recognize any signs of a business scammer, you need to rebuff them, go back to your travel party, Go to a safe, crowded place. Don't give your phone number or email address to avoid being stalked. Where you run into this online is, I don't know, maybe be on the lookout for some of these red flags like age disparity and and the desire to have a child with somebody who's clearly gone through menopause. Like that might be that might be a red flag. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good little PSA right there to anyone who may be considering a relationship with uh, someone from Tunisia or the like. But don't let that stop you from going on a 12 or 13 day tour in Tunisia with Aladdin, who 
may or may not be a Tunisian love rat himself. <laughs> well, uh, if that is a thing, and if there are any of his victims who happen to be listening to this podcast, you know what to do. Slide into the DMs. <laughs> Slide in. And, uh, and uh, we'll, of course, protect anyone's identity that wants that. I always protect my sources. So transitioning out of that whole segment here. Oh, this is big for you. I'm so excited for you for this. Oh my God, you guys. So somebody who might, some might say is the original Tunisian love rat is Mohammed and Danielle from season two. They have been arguably put the show on the map and uh, she is the queen she will forever be my queen of 90 Day Fiance. I don't care what you guys say about her or how much you guys make fun of her in that black and white outfit that's going all over the internet right now. I don't care how much you make fun of her. Or she will always and forever be my 90 Day Queen. I can see, like, you know that that emoji that has the hearts and the eyeballs? Like, you actually look like that right now talking about her. Yes. I was very, very excited for this. So when I sat down with her... One of the first things I asked her actually was about her thoughts on Laura of Laura and Aladdin, given the similarities in their stories. It's a very sticky subject, <laughs> it is. and I can't, I can't get myself too involved, or my friend's gonna get mad at me. But I feel like she's scamming him. Well, probably because that's that's her mo. I do. So. so- like. So just to clarify, like, so you have a friend that has gotten involved with Laura mm-hmm. and um, you're trying to warn him, but he's not listening at this point. Yeah. So yeah. we we don't know. I mean, everybody knows what Laura is capable of. I mean, we've talked about her before. She's been, a, you know, a subject of yeah. the broadcast before. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that don't make sense because she says she gets a pension. She's not old enough to retire. Yeah, I I don't know. She's I didn't in look at the... She's not. And then the whole her living here because I have a fr- I have a couple of people that live in Canada. And I was asking them about it. They can only come here and visit like six months, and then they have to go back unless they get citizenship. I don't know enough about it. I didn't look as closely into that because there were so many other things that were lies with her that like, I, if I were to dig into everything with her, I wouldn't have time for anything else. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I, I forgot about the Instagram when you wrote in your thing that in, there's no way you can fake a conversation with Instagram because you can't make an account that where someone has the same username. Right. Like you can fake messages, right? You can fake text conversations and things like that but you can't fake somebody's username on instagram so i can't like make a spoof account and like yeah have a conversation with myself under her username yeah Yeah. it's not possible so yeah so um yeah so laura uh anyway Let's let's forget about Laura. Let's forget about Laura for the time being. Yeah. Uh, I'm speaking to Queen Danielle, Queen Jabali. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Jabali. Um, the first question. Let's just get the first question out of the way because I I know what the answer is going to be, but everyone wants to know is why haven't you changed your last name back? I did not change my last name back because it was a personal choice and. At the time, it was just too much hassle to go through and change all the documents, go to all the different places to change it. And it's just a name. It don't really define who I am. People know who I am. So, <laughs> well, they know you by, you, you know, Danielle Jabali. They know you're forever connected to yeah. Muhammad. Yeah. And I, it, it don't even. It don't even bother me having it. It don't. So it's like no big deal. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. So that's the first question that everyone wants to know, always wants to know is why didn't you change your last name? Um, So first though, like, so you were on season two of the original and then you did season one of happily ever after. Were there other seasons that you did? Did you do a what now? One and two of happily. And I've done two seasons of what now? Okay. So when you and I were scheduling this, you said some days were not available because you had to do stuff with the show. Can you yeah. tell me about that? 
I can't until... <laughs> Oh, you can't tell me you're going to not put it in. <laughs> not put it in. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I'm under contract. <laughs> under contract. So that means we're going to see you on our screens again. Yes. Okay. Is it is it a Danielle dating show? No. <laughs> oh man, we have, I really want to see a Danielle dating show, but. <laughs> Maybe I'll draw it out there to TLC. <laughs> yes, TLC, if you're listening, to make sure she's not violating her contract, because, you know, that's what you do. Um, can you do a Danielle dating show, please? Because we really <laughs> want to see Danielle dating. <laughs> oh, okay. So how many years now has it been since you and Muhammad got divorced? It was May 2017 we got divorced. Okay. So what have you been doing with yourself since then? Going to school and just working and raising my kids. Okay. So what are you going to school for? Right now I'm in doing my prereqs to get ready for nursing school. Oh, very nice. That's a lot of work. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it, like math and science and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's we, crazy. No. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole lot of no for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, and then you're working as a, like a nursing assistant, nursing aide type of thing is what you're I doing? I do have my nurse aid certificate, but right now I've been taking care of mentally handicapped adults. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a cousin who does that. Yeah. So you're still living in Sandusky, Ohio? Yes. Okay. So that's where my profile says I'm from. And people don't get it. They don't get my reference to Sandusky, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you have to go back and watch Queen Jabali because you, I mean, and you take it in good stride. I think, you know, from what, everything that I've seen, you know, some you know, the signed pictures and things that you've done, you yeah. know, uh, you know, people ask you to write all kinds of things. I want my sex, you know, all yeah. of these things. Yeah. Can I, can I get you to say some of these iconic <laughs> quotes? <laughs> uh, Muhammad, I'm gonna get your ass deported. Muhammad, you used me. <laughs> you better hope your dick don't fall off. Yeah. <laughs> when we filmed that, the producer, my film producer, did not even know I said that till after they took it back to New York to edit it. And they're like, "Did you know she said that?" <laughs> It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Um, and, um, you know, I, I know you debate that you, you've said that you have, you didn't actually say this, the, I want my sex tonight demand. I think you claim that you never actually said that. I'm not sure where it came from, but. Mohammed said it. Oh, okay. He said it like at a tell all or something yeah. that you said that. Yeah. But still, but still it's, you know, it's funny. It's attributed to you, whether it's happened yeah. or not. It, yeah. Takes on a life of its own. It's, yep. all, it's all good. <laughs> and you have such a good attitude about it, which is great because like yeah. people, when they, when they order pictures and stuff from you, you know, they ask you to put these different quotes on yeah. them and stuff and you do. So you're yeah. like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I even had some t-shirts made that had that on it. So it's like, go laugh at the situation or you'd go crazy. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just so, so such iconic um, scenes, and and I always refer people to season one of Happily Ever After as being one of my favorites. But just yeah. your guys' stuff, like the rest is boring. Like yeah. just watch it for you guys because that's where the evidence binder was created. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and um, going on your mission, you and Big Red Beth going on your mission. Yeah, to to find <laughs> to find mom in, in Miami or yeah. wherever. <laughs> so so you, take me back to your season filming the original, the first mm -hmm. time you felt you filmed with Muhammad. Um, now, I mean, my what I do is you know I pull back the curtain on what is real and what's not real uh -huh. on the show in, in a variety of different ways. Whether yeah. it's a it's produ you know producers 
making things up or whether the whole story is a fraud. You know, there's all these yeah. varying levels of fraud. What can you tell me about your season filming? Are there any like behind the scenes things that you can tell me that were like fun facts or that were certain scenes were producer driven or anything like that? Not really, because our everything was real that happened. Well, besides the, I think the producers did put up the gir- the bar scene where Muhammad was playing, were was drinking with those guys at the bar. Okay, okay. They put up the girl to come up to him. Oh, okay, so that was producer driven. So that was yeah. season two, though. So that was like before they really like the fraud got serious. Like that was yeah. back when. Most of it was still real. Yeah. So what we see with you and Muhammad is real. And like you, like waking up the sun, like the morning of your wedding, Mm -hmm. like, and he's just gone. Is that, was that really the timeline that that had occurred on? Oh yeah. Really? It happened in the morning. Yep. He went to the lawyer. I did not even know he went to a lawyer until after they came back and they were filming us talking. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, Okay, that's fascinating. So then you go on to record um, Happily Season 1 and Season 2. And I have to refresh my memory on Season 2 because I don't remember everything that happened during that that particular one. Um, What about there? Did did the, the frauding, the TLC production frauding start to happen during those filming? Not really, because I'm the one that wanted to go to Miami to see what was up. Because before he had came to, what started that was he had came to Ohio to try to talk me out of the annulment, and it didn't work. And then um, he had told me, like, told me we were going to stay friends and stuff like that. But then when he got back down to Miami, he started not talking to me and pulling that bullshit again. And I'm like, this is it. I'm going down there and find out what the hell is going on. I mean, because we're still married. And if he's down there messing around with other women, my God. Which you know, <laughs> which you know he was doing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, when he first came over now, so you had gone, you'd gone the annulment route because you were trying to prove that he had come over with um, nefarious intent, that he was frauding you because he didn't really love you and he didn't have the intent to get married, even though from your end, you actually had fallen in love with him and you believed what he was saying. And then you, you learned later that it didn't appear that he had the same intent that yeah. you did. So that's why you were going for the annulment instead of a divorce because the annulment was sort of nullify also his green yeah. card. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that didn't go through and yeah. they had, you had to do a divorce. So he's still yeah. here in the United States somewhere. Yeah. Have you talked to him recently? I have not talked to him in about two months. Two and months. Last, oh, that's fairly yeah. recent. And last I talked to him, I did come out and ask him if he got his 10 year green card and he was still waiting on it. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, at this point, like, do you even care? No, I don't. <laughs> it is, Whatever. It is. <laughs> I mean, I don't even care if we talk or not talk. I mean, we were just checking in to see how each other was and stuff. Because I needed help with something. Because I have this stalker who likes to put everything out there that she thinks she knows. And she was bad-mouthing me again. So, And he's friends with her. So I was trying to get him to get her to stop because really it's none of her business what happened. That was between me and him. And he got her to quit and we had talked and then he goes through his phase where he don't want to talk to me no more. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> it doesn't bother me. So do you, we know, like, I mean, we, we see him on social media. He'll post pictures of himself, like in a truck mm-hmm. or in a car, yeah. like in Texas or something. Is that, is that the last one we know? He's in Chicago. Chicago? Oh, okay. Okay. He's been in um, Chicago since the spring. One of the seasons, I can't remember which one, we saw you dating Nelson. <laughs> Can you say no, Nelson? Okay. Can you say his name for me? Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, with that, 
It wasn't. I had met the dude one other time I went to Maryland, and we only met a half hour. And then they wanted to film me going on a date and stuff, so I asked him if he wanted to be filmed with me. And it was supposed to be the next time I went back to Maryland, we were going to meet up. Well, on my drive there, I was letting him know that I was on my way there. And the dude wanted to come to my hotel room at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, dude, you're not coming. Not going down that road. I've been up since 6 a.m. And I didn't leave until 6 in the evening. And it's a six-hour drive. And I'm not going to get there till early we in the morning and i'm going to bed <laughs> so he got pissed the whole it, the whole next day we were texting back and forth he said he wasn't gonna come because i didn't let him come to my hotel room and then he wanted money to be filmed and i'm like dude you ain't gonna get no money because he thought he was gonna get as much as i was gonna get i'm like dude it don't work that way <laughs> <laughs> and so we knew he wasn't showing up so <laughs> so have you talked to him since no i ended up blocking him as soon as i got back to ohio smart smart um now what about what about other kinds of dating what other kinds of dating have you done since then um <laughs> there I mean, there hasn't really been anyone else, just one person that I've been close to for the last four years. So, is this what the new recording of the show is going to be about? No. <laughs> oh, okay. So, tell us about him. Tell what can you tell us about this, this mystery guy in your life? Oh, just that we've known each other for four years. He's been supportive of me, he's the one that encouraged me to go to school. And all that stuff. Is he local to you? No. He's so he's long distance. Is he in the United States? Yes, he's in the okay. United States. Okay, so at least you don't have to do another. Yeah. yeah. Like, long, <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Do you do you see him frequently? Yes, I do. So he's close enough, like driving distance. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but he's long distance, but not super long. Yeah. So he's like in a state's drive away from me. Yeah. Okay. Does he have a name? I'm not putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> he, okay. He was no part of the TV show, nothing of that. And I respect that. Plus, I prefer our relationship private. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Danielle's Mystery Man, please reach out to me at Frauded by TLC. Hit me up. <laughs> Talk to me. I want to get your side of the story. <laughs> I want to verify what Danielle's been saying about you. <laughs> so tell me this. Is he good in bed? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been dating Mystery Man for the last four years. Do you have uh, plans for your future with him? Um, I'm not quite sure because my main focus is doing school and finishing school. Is is he going to put a ring on it? Not right now. <laughs> not right I'm now. No okay. hurry. I'm in no hurry to get married again. Let's put it that way. Well, then you'd have to get rid of your last name, Jabali, probably, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. I go after my divorce. I went back to my maiden name um, just because it was easier. And I plan if I, I well, I don't plan to ever get married again. But if I were to, I wouldn't change my last name. So, you know, um, nothing wrong with that. Like I'm happily shacked up with my hetero life mate. We are not going to get married. It's all good. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. How are your kids doing? They are doing awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now I remind. Do remind us who who your kid like your, your the ages and stuff my son Corey uh, will be 27 this weekend my oldest daughter faith is 22 okay. my next oldest kylie she's 19 and then my youngest is 18 oh wow and you have some grandchildren right yes i have, have a, a couple right four grandkids and one oh. on the way 
Oh my God, congratulations. Yes. That's, and that's then, exciting. Then finally a girl. Oh. <laughs> Too many penises around you, you can't yeah. handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I have to say that you look really good. So I'm Thanks. talking to her on Skype so I can see her. She looks, you look, you look really good. You look fantastic. That's a really good hair color. On you. I like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, my, my middle daughter did it because she's a licensed cosmetologist. Oh, that's a handy to have in the house. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> very nice very nice you're in an awfully good mood did i catch you after like phone sex with your mystery man no <laughs> no that's not <laughs> do you do you have phone sex with your mystery man no do you have like video calls with your mystery yes, man we have video calls we text we phone call we do it all <laughs> so you do have like video sexting like (laughs) (laughs) yes okay so um what uh, i know the 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 view uh, the viewers know wrong the listeners want to know about um walmart tom yeah remember walmart tom you remember walmart tom can you did you remember your famous line in reference to him i was that I hate Muhammad or something? No, it's, you're not. You're not neutral. Oh yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you do that for us? You're not neutral. <laughs> okay, so what's what's Walmart Tom doing these days? Have you talked to him? Do you know who he is? Like, have, have you hang talked out? to him since the last time I seen him? <laughs> Which was on the show Which when he tried to show. play mediator between yeah. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> So here's another question. Would you ever do the show again? Well, obviously you're going to do a show that you won't tell me any details about, but um, would you do another like marriage dating show with them? With TLC sharp entertainment? Oh, I don't know. I I know I would never do another long, like an overseas relationship again. Been there, done that over that. (laughs) (laughs) Can you tell us what site you met Muhammad on? It was Meet Me. Meet Me. I've never even heard of that one. Okay. It's an older dating app. Okay. Um, and can are you familiar with the term Tunisian love rat? Yes. Are, were you familiar with it then? No. No, but you are now. Yes. Do you believe that Muhammad is a Tunisian love rat? I still have mixed feelings on that. I do. because And the thing is, people have to realize that I seen stuff and things that he, how he treated me and stuff were different in the very beginning. And then when he came here and a lot of Muslims, when they come over here, they change because there's all this freedom and stuff here that they don't have over there. And I think between that and then the females from the fan base (laughs) offering him a better life did not help. Okay. So that all just was too much for him. And and he said, peace out, Danielle. I've got something better over here. Yeah. So what can you tell us about what we didn't see on TV um, about your relationship with him that, that we didn't see either, like like before he came over and then after what they showed on camera and what was happening yeah. behind the scenes? Okay. A lot of people don't know that we started talking in December 2012. Okay. I went over there July 2013, and I stayed like three weeks. And throughout this whole relationship, we talked – All throughout the days, we video chatted five to six times a week. Um, He came over here May of 2014. So our relationship was already like almost two years into it. It was. And he, he never gave me any signs throughout our whole relationship that, that he was using me or anything like that. Because he... Offered to send me money one time. He never took any money from me until until he he was it was time for him to come over here. 
And the only reason that was, was because when we decided to do the K-1, it was also time for him to do his work visa in Qatar. So we had to make a decision whether for him to stay in Qatar and do that or go back to Tunisia and do our K-1 visa. And we, we decided on him going back to Tunisia to do the K-1 visa, and we didn't think it was going to be that long, but it turned out to be longer because they put us in administrative processing so they could check out background checks and stuff like that. Make sure it was all above board. Yeah. So I'm just saying they determined that it was above board because yeah. they gave him the visa and he came over here. Um, and then he came over. So, you know, what they showed the on camera, it seemed pretty obvious to me early on watching the season that he was just a scammer. Mm-hmm. When did that become clear, start becoming clear to you? After our marriage... And when he started going on trips, just like lying about the trips, because there was a couple of times he told me he was going for interviews, but then in reality, he was posting from South Carolina at this castle and stuff like that. So it didn't start adding up. Okay. So then you started questioning things and, and yeah. that was so after you guys got married. Yeah. So, um, that first season then we saw was everything leading up to the, to the wedding. Um, did anything, were there any red flags to you before you got married that in hindsight, looking back, you would go, Oh, I should have thought. No, no, nope. It wasn't until after we got married and after he started going on the trips and stuff like that, that red flags started popping up. Let's back up. What made you decide to get on this website of meeting uh, overseas man instead of local? I wasn't local? even looking for overseas people. I was basically looking for local people just to meet up and become friends with. And he was the one that reached out to me and started messaging me. And our beginning messages were just asking how each other was and just chit-chatting. It was months, like three months later before it started turning more romantic. And even then, it took him another three months to convince me to come see him because one of the big things for me was the age. Right. And what was the age difference between you guys? 15 years. Yeah. You need somebody age appropriate, Danielle. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Give me some behind the scenes of the either what was, you know, during filming with Muhammad or since then, like that you that you haven't shared with other people. Um, I mean, there was they showed a lot of bad stuff the first season and that we had good stuff, too, that they didn't show. Like there was a family cookout where he met all my family, extended family and there was a um, talk that me, him, and the, all three girls had. They didn't show that. They Just all kinds of things that they didn't show. Um, some stuff. He was very good with my girls. <laughs> then there was one time I was at work, and he decided to play dress-up with them. And he dressed up in my clothes, but he, he would not let the girls take no pictures. <laughs> that's funny. that they would put it out there <laughs> oh my god that's awesome Muhammad in, in, in your clothes oh my god <laughs> that is great um, we did see your kids a lot on, on the first season um, and they had some opinions about the situation how accurately was were their opinions just, uh, portrayed on the show mm. They were pretty good because my son was concerned that he was here for the wrong reasons. And which, my which oldest, he was. <laughs> in case you haven't in case you haven't figured that out yet, he was. <laughs> and then my oldest daughter, she was like later into getting to know him. She didn't really try to get to know him until he it was about time for him to come over here. Okay. So they were they were legitimately concerned about you. Yeah, yeah. And had had you had a history of 
bringing inappropriate men into your life or was this the first? This was the first because <laughs> me and their, me and the kids' dad, we were together. We were high school sweethearts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Muhammad was really the first guy you dated after that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, um, so you were on season two. We're currently on season seven of the original. And that's, there's also all of the before the 90 days and the other way and all the stuff. Do you still yeah. watch the show? Yes, I do still watch the show. I mean, not every Sunday, <laughs> but I do watch it when I do get time to. Okay. So of all of the seasons and everything that you've watched, who is your favorite couple? It could be, it could be your season or the season before any of any couple, all time favorite couple. It's hard to pick, but I do like Russ and Pal. Pal has grown on me since she has become a mother. <laughs> um, I really like Molly. <laughs> um, I like Aladdin. Aladdin, whatever you say his <laughs> name. I like him a lot. Um, now, Al, there's a lot of comparisons between Aladdin and Muhammad because they're both from Tunisia, working yes. in Qatar, 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 whatever. Yeah. Um, young guys yeah. with older women. So, yeah. like, there's a lot of comparisons there. Yeah. And the thing is, there shouldn't be because there's a lot of big differences, okay? For one, Aladdin posted on Aladdin posted on social media defending Laura. Muhammad never did that with me. Aladdin supported Laura. Muhammad never supported me. I paid for everything. Um Aladdin had a big wedding in front of his whole family. Me and Muhammad did not have a wedding in front of his family. Laura met all of Aladdin's family. I only met one of Muhammad's family. Okay, so you're saying so, Muhammad was a dick and Aladdin's not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I and I truly believe Aladdin loved loved Laura till she okay. did things that she did. Okay. Okay, so who is who, who's your least favorite people from the show? Um, for what for whatever reason, <laughs> I would. I don't like Jason Hitch that one much. <laughs> he he likes to run his mouth a lot. So <laughs> um, okay, Jason Hitch was also season two. Yeah, I don't care for Evelyn. Okay. Because I think I think she's done Corey dirty. Okay. I do. Okay. All right. And Laura, I really don't care for her that much anymore either. <laughs> well, we started <laughs> the 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 interview with that, so. Um, but it's okay. because Laura has lied a lot, and right. then I finally seen it and have open eyes, so it's like nah. <laughs> And you so, cannot blame you cannot blame your marriage ending because of a show. You signed up for it. You knew what you were getting into. No one forced you to talk about your husband's being bad in, in bed. You could have refused to say that. <laughs> no one held a gun to your head to say that. Okay, so on that same note, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned from having been on through this experience, including the show? My biggest lesson is you have to block out the negativity from social media because it will drive you crazy. Okay. And you'll get depressed from it because my first season, I got depressed from the negativity. Okay. The second thing don't tell your business to everyone known to man out there because a lot of the people are only wanting info <laughs> to use against you. And you keep your yeah. circle small. That's smart. That's smart. <laughs> um, what would you say is your biggest regret from either shooting the show or your relationship with Muhammad? My biggest regret, I would say 
only going over once, and I think I should have went over more than once before bringing him here. To get to know him better? Yeah. You think that that would have changed things? You think you would have been able to see it? I think it would have been the long run, because then I probably would have maybe seen more red flags or something like that. Okay. What, if you were to give advice to somebody, if somebody were to come to you and say, maybe one of your daughters and say, hypothetically, they met somebody overseas, what advice would you give them? I would tell them to take it slow, go over more than once, and if you have to, hire a private investigator. <laughs> well, we have Rebecca. She's a, she's a private investigator. Yeah. I'm from the show. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rebecca. Um, okay, so if hypothetically somebody that you know, maybe a friend, family member, comes to you and says that they wanted to do the show, what advice would you give them? I would tell them to be yourself. Do not let the show have you do anything that you don't want to do. Do you feel that you had to do things that you didn't want to do? I don't feel that I did. I feel that we did everything that, that we did on our own and no one forced us to say anything. Everything came out of our own mouths is what we said. But I've heard that people, there's a lot of people saying that, the shows put them up to stuff and things like that. And I don't believe that because you can always tell them no. Well, I think a lot has changed since season two, since your original season, Um, just in my conversations, things that I've seen and what, you know, I don't think I would have been able to be in really, I wouldn't, there wasn't a need for me back in season one (laughs) and two. Now there's so much fraud and so much fakeness that, I mean, it's almost gotten to the point where it's out of control. And and I my inbox is just pinging all the time because of yeah. so much that's happening. Yeah. Um, and and it's, uh, some people will say that it takes away from the entertainment value, that they preferred mm-hmm. it back in, like, the season two, was like, which was yeah. like the – season two was probably one of the best seasons out there, yeah. I would say. And two, I think some of the cast now – a lot of the stuff they do so they can get on some of the other spinoffs. Okay. And and do you speak from personal experience? Like you have cast members tell you or do you, you're just making assumptions here? What, what, where were you? Just Where's that coming assumptions, from? Making assumptions by what I've seen with certain cast members like Jay and Ashley. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Jay and Trashley. Yeah. Um, are you, are are you friendly with any cast members, past or present? Um, I talk to some of them here and there, but not like friendly, friendly. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think pretty much all casts follow each other and we like support each other by liking each other's posts and things like that. And I think that there are certain casts that like other casts better than others, but yeah. Well, they can't all be winners. Yeah. So uh, you touched on this a little bit. Some of the casts is that are, they're trying to, it appears that they're trying to get like Instagram fame and yeah. like get endorsement deals and things like that. You've had some mm-hmm. endorsement deals. Um, and I'm talking like outside of cameo. I'm talking like product yeah. endorsement and, um, like the pictures that you've posted with your like teeth whitening and stuff, yeah. which are classic. Love them. Of course, they're meme- totally memeable, which you're totally okay with. But um, what has your experience been like on that end, like being an alumni alumni of the show, so to speak, in an age where when you first did the show, the Instagram stuff wasn't really a thing. And now it is like, how yeah. does, how, how does that affect you as an alumni of the show? Um, I think it's, there's good things and bad things about it. I mean, because if you, if you do it right, you can get endorsement deals and things like that. But then if you do it wrong, like some cast members and put out lies and stuff out there, 
then you're going to get trashed for it. Right. What has been your experience with your particular endorsement deals that you that you do, which are I've, the teeth I've whitening, had, I think, and the poop tea and yeah, I've had pretty good. I've had fun doing them actually. I mean, I okay. get to try the products, I get paid for it, so it's <laughs> like a win win. <laughs> right, right. What has been your favorite product that you've endorsed? I think my favorite one is the weighted blanket. Oh, interesting. Okay. And what has been your least favorite that you've endorsed or one that you didn't, you were asked to endorse that you didn't because the product was shit or something? Um, I don't think there's, there hasn't really been one that is like my least favorite. They're, they're all pretty much out there that I, I do like, and I have tried, but yeah. Have you said no to any particular ones? No. Okay. Is there a product that you would like to endorse that they haven't approached you yet? This is your chance to tell them. Not right now. I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want like Invisalign or Smile Direct or Candid, oh, one of yeah. the invisible liners. I want, I want the that, right? One that I see everyone doing now. The which one? The mattress. Oh yeah, I want the the teeth straighteners. Yeah, that would that would be a good one. The teeth straightener. <laughs> and and the away suitcase would be nice. Although I don't ever travel anymore, so it would be pointless. But it's just you know, it'd be nice. Yeah. Um, do you have just like I don't know? What's the one question you get asked all the time? The one question I get asked all the time why I have not changed my name. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we started with it. Okay. And, and I mean, yeah. Okay. So we, we've answered that. And what's a question that you wish people would ask you? And the answer to that question. Um, I like when people ask about my kids and my family, because a lot of people don't realize my kids and my family, we're close. We are. And especially my kids, especially my daughters, we share everything with each other. What is something that nobody knows about you that you wish people did? Other than your kids, kind of like in that same kind of question. <laughs> um, that I come from a family, fa- I have six siblings. My parents are deceased. And I raise my two younger brothers. Oh, wow. Do they still live close to you? Yeah, so you, we all very live close. Yeah. Close, fr- close family? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, as you know, I'm a podcast. I, don't, I have the Instagram site, but I also have a podcast, and I also like to listen to podcasts. What podcasts do you like to listen to? Like, is I there really, a genre? I really don't listen to podcasts that much unless I'm doing, like, an interview with them, and then I... <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them. <laughs> wow, wow! Isn't I mean, it? how how? I mean, you're on cloud nine right now. Amazing. This is, it's, this is the most excited I've seen you since I gave you that ring that's on your left hand right now. <laughs> it's just an appreciation ring. Y'all. The appreciation ring. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, that great job, great get, and and I wish you could see her face right now because it's like again, it's the heart emoji in real life. <laughs> definitely very excited for that and i hope to be bringing you lots more of those types of interviews in the future uh, as you guys may or may not know tlc has kind of a grasp on the cast members while they're filming and for a period of time after they're done filming so they have to the ones who seek permission often won't, won't get it, especially to talk to me, because I think TLC has a love-hate relationship with me. Better to ask for forgiveness. That's what I say, but I can't convince everybody to, know. you know, potentially violate their contract. So, sure. but I do have some good, interesting guests lined up of people that have agreed to come on, and some of these ancillary characters and secondary characters that may or may not have as extensive of a. Uh, that would be fun. That would be fun because those people can usually talk more and give you more stuff, right. inside stuff. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank so, you, Danielle. Yes, and thank you, Danielle. So now, got some shout-outs? Let's do the shout-outs. Can I read it? Absolutely. Oh, I love doing this part. Okay. 
Uh, this is from Brooke. And Brooke says, and I quote, Hey there, love the podcast. I'm just assuming that's what Brooke sounds like. I apologize, Brooke, if I if you're being offended by this. I'm sorry about him. Hey there. Well, I'm sorry about my face. Hey there, love the podcast. Something I've always wondered about 90 Day that I thought you might have some insight on. Do TLC producers ever give cast members eye drops to help them fake cry? Brooke, that is a freaking awesome question. And it is one that I actually do not have a solid answer on. Ah, see, I said it all up and you don't even have an answer. I don't. I don't. But this is something that I am going to be getting. Call Paul and we'll ask Paul. We'll ask Paul. We'll ask Paul. I'll I'll put in a call. I'll put in some calls and see what I can find out for you. All right. Ask Paul about that. Um, Yeah, it's a talent. If you've ever done acting before, which I did a little bit in high school, it's really tough to fake cry. Like, you really have to, like... You know, put yourself in, uh, I guess, like a mental place that made you cry at some point. And so, I mean, it takes a lot of acting chops. And the reason I'm saying this is because I am uh, assuming that a lot of these people on this show don't have those. So maybe they use some alternative methods like (laughs) eye drops to make them cry or onions, you know, cutting onions, that type of thing. It's a really good assumption to make. And it's one that I'm definitely going to be digging into to find out. Yeah. So thanks for the question, Brooke. And uh, if if, uh, you want a shout out on the show, on the dump, how can someone get in touch with you? You can go to our website, talkersoffraud.com. And there is a form right there on that front page called the dump. Just fill it in and that'll send me an email and I will get your questions, comments, concerns, anything that you put in there, we'll get. And uh, our team will address it and get back to you on the next episode. All right. Great. So what else you have? Well, we talked about the merch earlier. So yes, buy the merch again, this room that we're sitting in right now. um, As I, as I look to my right, there is a twin bed. This is a spare bedroom slash uh, playroom that we're in right now. Also the studio. Um, there's a twin bed and it is packed to the gills with these cool orange bags that have the Fraudcast logo on them. And inside of these bags, what will pe- people find? So these are the swag bags he's talking about. And I debuted them on my last Frauded Night Live, which is my Friday Night Live video on Instagram. But for those of you guys who can't tune in or are unable to for whatever reason, They are an orange bag, like it's a reusable grocery bag. Inside that bag is a mug with the Fraudcast logo, a pen, which on one end is a pen, one end is a stylus, and some stickers, a pop socket, and another cup, a plastic cup that, you know, like those little kid size cups that you can use for almost anything. So this is a bag filled with that, uh, those stuff. This is the swag bags. They are, some of them are being used for giveaways. Some of them, some of them are going out in the mail to people who have already uh, gotten them for a variety of reasons. Uh, some are going to hospitals for that reason. And then the others I will be selling on my store on talkersoffraud.com. Yeah. So if you uh, enter a contest to try to win, you don't win, but you still want the prize. You can get it. You can get it. They're priced at $25 plus shipping, and you get all that fun stuff, which is actually a really good price because I I basically did it for the cost of the items to me. Okay, very good. But in addition to the swag bags on the merch store, there's a variety of options. There's T-shirts and mouse pads. You guys asked for mouse pads. You guys asked for uh, mugs and cups. There's a variety of those with the variations of the Fraudcast logo, but then mm-hmm. there's also some like wine tumblers that have so much happy on them. So we also have who is against the queen will die on a wine tumbler. And you don't have to explain that one to me. Yeah. You have to go back and watch season six. That okay. was all Larissa. I'll, I'll add that to my list. Yeah. So we have all kinds of, of fun, uh, fun little sayings and graphics on various different kinds of products. So those are all up there on talkers of fraud.com. And, oh, somebody who just got her merch today, Scorpio Lynn, she sent me a message today of her T-shirt and stickers that she had ordered from the store. She was one of our first orders to go in. She got her stuff today. She's going to be posting pictures of that. I'm super excited to see her in them. 
And if you guys want your own, then it can be yours too. And again, you just go to the website, which is talkersofraud.com and click on the store button. Very good. Very good. Well, this has been fun. I'm glad you dragged me upstairs for this. Um, I'm glad I got to be with you while you were talking to the Queen Danielle. Because that, <laughs> I really would, like, we should have done the, the the Friday Night Live Instagram. You should have live Instagrammed that. Because you wouldn't have needed any Instagram filters and hearts would have been coming out of your earballs. <laughs> I actually don't use filters on my Friday Night Lives. Okay. Well, they get you me, did, you they get me completely unfiltered. And I'm usually not wearing any makeup. What time do you usually do it on Fridays? I usually do it at 9.30 p.m. Eastern okay. on Friday nights. Okay. And we, we just tune, tune in for about an hour. I talk about the weekly tea that we have at that point. And mm -hmm. then we kind of just shoot the breeze and talk and chit-chat about all kinds of sorts of stuff. It's you ever really have, fun. Like, surprise people that just pop up from time to time? Yes. Sometimes we do have surprise people that pop up from time to time. Yeah. Anybody worth mentioning? Oh, yes. This most recent one, Hedo Live Mate popped in. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was there. That was fun. Yes. That was fun. I was downstairs uh, messing around with Disney Plus, And then I said, I looked at my phone and it said, oh, Friday by TLC is live. And I clicked on the thing on my phone and I was watching you. And then the little thing popped up that said, would you like to join the video? And I was like, yes, I would. So I clicked the thing and I was like, she's not going to say yes. And then before you know it, boom, there I was. There he was. Before thousands of people. Yeah, it was great. Anyway, if you want to join us, uh, it's Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. I'll usually post an announcement about it. Come join us. We have a lot of fun. We chit-chat. If you have questions you want answered, send those to me ahead of time, and I'll see what I can do to get them answered on air for you. But they have the little questions. Can't people ask questions while you're there live, too? Well, yeah, but it's hard for me to read. They go by quickly on the comments. and okay. stuff go by quickly. So All it's right. easier. If it's something I need to look into and research or something. Okay. Well, I have to go. I'm going to go look up uh, Boobapedia while uh, we close the show out. Diamond Fox. Diamond Fox. Again, it's a rule. If you're going to be in the porn industry, you have to have X's in your name. Porn grandma. Porn grandma. And I can't wait to see more of her next week. And that's it for us this week. I'm frauded by TLC and I'm dumpster diving so you don't have to. You can find your fraudcaster on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at frauded by TLC and on the web at talkersoffraud.com. This broadcast has been produced and edited by yours truly, art by Sarah Daudi. Music written, produced, and performed by Umami. Segment producer at iHeart Reality TV Shows. Further assistance provided by many unnamed fraud consultants.